Welcome, Locked On Pirates and Locked On Phillies fans, listeners, devoted listeners of the podcast. It's about that time of year where the two Pennsylvania teams finally lock horns this weekend in the Battle of Pennsylvania with two teams that are in very different spots heading into this series, but both got swept by the Cubs at <laughs> after the All-Star break. My name is Ethan Smith of the Locked On Pirates podcast. That is Connor Thomas of the Locked On Phillies podcast. And we are here to preview the upcoming series between the Pirates and the Phillies, talk about the trade deadline, all of that good stuff. And Connor, first, for starters, uh, we are recording today on Wednesday, and you guys got a pretty big win today over the Atlanta Braves to pick up a wild card spot. We absolutely did, moving back into that third spot and kind of been flipping back and forth with uh, your guys' friends, the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, But a big win today in the series ender against Atlanta and just, uh, I mean, it was a weird series the whole way through. Glad the Phils could pull them out because getting swept by the Cubs to start the second half is uh, not a great way to get going. So hopefully it's the start of some momentum uh, for this team. But, yeah, nice win today. Well, yeah, and for Pirates fans, you brought up the Cubs. Uh, We lost our two games in Chicago as well. Two uh, hard-fought games for the most part, but the Pirates can no longer say that they are third in the NL Central anymore. Uh, The Cubs have overtaken that spot by about a half a game. And Cincinnati is even only two games behind the Pirates now. So what once was a third-place team, the Pirates are kind of teetering on the brink of uh, falling to dead last again which is what not a lot of people want to see here in Pittsburgh. But as far as Philly goes and this series goes, from recent memory, and I think you would agree here, these teams usually play each other pretty tough. I don't they think really there's really do. any question there. Yeah, they really absolutely do. And you think back to like the Josh Bell years and everything like that. I mean, there's been some talent in Pittsburgh. They just don't stay all that long for obvious reasons. But yeah, we've always played well. It's kind of the whole Eagle Steelers thing as well. These in town or in state rivals, rather, really always find a way to play each other tough. And I'm expecting this to be a really competitive series because I think a lot of Phillies fans see the Pirates and they think, oh, well, that's a bottom feeder team. And they haven't kept up with some of the young, exciting players you guys have, some of the talent you do have on this roster, some pitchers we're going to see in this series who are not just lock wins because they play for Pittsburgh. So I think it will be a hard-fought series. And I wouldn't be too surprised to see a split, even though the Phillies are expecting to come out with at least three out of four. Yeah, and I think that's where Philly fans should be thinking, especially with the fact that you're fighting for a wild card spot. Of course, this series uh, is the series that will come before the trade deadline, so we'll get into that a little bit more uh, later. But you get a pretty interesting mix of pitching matchups in this series. Of course, uh, the series starts tomorrow. Pirates are off today. The Phillies, of course, finishing up their series against Atlanta today. You get Zach Wheeler and Zach Thompson tomorrow, so a battle of the Zachs. Uh, Friday, you get uh, Bailey Falter and Jose Quintana. If Quintana is still here, there's a lot that can happen from now until Friday and it's trade deadline season. So, I mean, it could happen while we're recording this podcast for all I know. Saturday on Fox, by the way, which is (laughs) absolutely great. And the pitching matchup is even better to match for national TV with Ranger Suarez and Mitch Keller going at each other in that matchup, and then Sunday, of course, Aaron Nola and JT Brubaker, the two aces of their staffs, I would say, as of right now, will go at it on Sunday at 135 on trade deadline day, I believe. Or is, tra- is the trade deadline the following day? I trade deadline is the second. So Oh, yeah. okay. Yep. So the last full series before we get to the trade deadline. And then, ironically, you guys play the Braves again after this series. So it seems like you're yeah. seeing your friends over there in Atlanta a lot. As you see, I am kind of in the Georgia realm of things. So, see that. I, But I do like rooting against Atlanta. Shout out to uh, Jake Mastriani over there at Locked on Braves, though. He does a great job. But as far as this series goes, um, what have the Phillies been doing good this year that has kind of propelled them to this record that they have, to the spot they're in? What do you think has been the strong suit of the team that most applies to why the Phillies win and why they will probably win this series? Yeah, well, the starting pitching has been exceptional for the top three guys. Zach Wheeler has been really good this year. Aaron Nola has been really good this year. Neither an all-star, but you could have made a case for both of them to be all-stars on the National League roster. Just just one of those years where there are a lot of good arms to deal with in the National League, but they've both been great. Kyle Gibson, who threw today, has been really good now. 
You guys won't see him. He'll obviously miss the next four games and pitch the fifth game with his days off. But he's been exceptional. Exceptional, And those uh, top couple starting pitchers have been really good. And as of the past month and a half, two months, the bullpen's been one of the best in baseball. So making up for a team that wasn't supposed to have a lot of defense and still doesn't have a lot of defense. They had a rough defensive series against Atlanta this past one. The pitching has been really good, both starting and relieving. And with Bryce Harper hurt, with Gene Segura hurt, and two of your top couple hitters, that has really been the force that's carried them to their stretch since Rob Thompson took over for Joe Girardi that has put them in a wild card spot. Yeah, and for the Pirates even, I'd even say pitching right now has been one of the strong suits of this team. So I could be expecting a pretty defensive series here. Uh, as I mentioned, JT Brubaker has been absolutely on it lately. Uh, Mitch Keller has even b- done a lot better uh, as of late. Jose Quintana, who reportedly right now, which I'll talk about on our episode tomorrow at Locked on Pirates, uh, is apparently being fielded by the White Sox and the Yankees. So he's been very consistent with his 370 ERA, and the guy's been awesome as a veteran. Yet another veteran arm coming through Pittsburgh, and if he follows the same track record as Tyler Anderson, he'll end up at the Dodgers in the All-Star game. You never know. Uh, But that's where I'm thinking that these two teams are going to battle in is the pitching, definitely. But the offense for the Pirates has just been so stagnant, it's ridiculous. Uh, Yoshi Tsutsugo, and at this point, I've tried to be nice, Connor. I've tried to be nice about it. I'm for Philly. You don't have to be nice. I I got you. You would be better off throwing me and you in the lineup every day. This is no offense to me or Connor. But you would be better off throwing us in there to face major league pitching than seeing Yoshi Tsutsugo and Josh Van Meter in the lineup for the Pirates. It's just awful. Of course, most of the people that don't watch the Pirates every day think, oh, well, they have Reynolds, Hayes, and Cruz. That's a pretty good lineup. Not realizing we just traded one of the better DHs in baseball and Daniel Vogelbach to the Mets. Mm -hmm. And outside of that, there's not a lot of offense going on here. Defensively, this team has been great for the most part. But... As far as the offense goes, I think that's the difference in this series. I think the Phillies with Castellanos, Schwarber, Harper, well, Harper won't be playing, but even what he is here, Hoskins, Real Muto, you know, the the usual suspects that you're used to hearing about uh, Philly, I think they're going to make the difference here, especially Kyle Schwarber. PNC Park is a park built for that guy. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, the swing he has, where he takes it to right field all the time with that power and that pop that he has, PNC Park is a park built for Swarber to hit one into the Allegheny River. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with that. So even as the Pirates host, I do think we steal a game in there somewhere. I don't know which one it'll be, but I do think the Phillies win three out of four games here in the series. Yeah, the Phils only have one series this year where they won four games, and it was actually not a four-game sweep. They won four of five against the Washington Nationals in Washington, but it was a weird five-game series with a doubleheader in there. So no four-game sweep yet this year, even though they came close against the Los Angeles Dodgers. I don't see a four-game sweep coming because this team just hasn't been consistent enough offensively. And you brought up Kyle Schwarber. You're actually seeing him at a really good time. He's three for his last 40. And all three of those hits have been home runs, but still, he's just really, really cold right now. And no one else has totally picked up the slack. I'll tell you the guy you guys got to watch out for in this series. Alec Bohm is hitting like 415 over his last 20 games. He's on a, I believe today made it a 12 or a 13 game hitting streak. And he's on absolute fire right now. So that's a guy to look out for that's probably hitting sixth or seventh in most of these games against Pittsburgh, but the offense hasn't been consistent top to bottom for the Phillies. And that's why they get swept by the Cubs. That's why they drop a game to the Braves because they just haven't consistently been able to produce. So they're still susceptible to dropping a game or two here or there. Yeah. And I mean, again, I just personally, I think the offensive like star power, as I put it in quotations, I won't say you have like stars on your team outside of Harper and a couple other guys like Schwarber and all that, yeah. but you definitely have an offense that has more upside than the pirates do. So yeah, again, I think the names, right. you like, you read down the lineup and you can just see like, okay, this team's got these guys and you recognize yeah. these names. It's what I've been saying about the Phils all year. Why I feel like they're a playoff team because you just read the names. They sound like a playoff roster. So, oh yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you there. 
Oh, yeah, and I think the Pirates and the Phillies matching up this weekend, I think we're in agreement. The Phillies are going to win three out of four. That's what I predicted earlier in the week on Monday's episode. Mm-hmm. And the Pirates will not be looking for a ring this year. The Phillies are in line to look for one right now. Maybe. And a perfect place to go find fine jewelry or rings like that is BlueNile.com, of course. There are two parts to BlueNile.com, where you could celebrate all of life's special moments from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic and timeless jewelry piece like a World Series ring, all at prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler. There are two parts, wedding and fine jewelry, and of course, you know, whether, whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, like a World Series win. Find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as the setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring. Each ring, of course, is one of a kind. And if you're looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7, and they are available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget. So make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And going on now is the Blue Nile anniversary sale. So you can save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. So shop stress-free and find your forever piece and go to BlueNile.com today. So it's that time of year again where it's the trade deadline. And if you remember last year, uh, the Phillies and the Pirates were involved in a trade Got last it. year at like one o'clock at night for Tyler Anderson. And it ended up, uh, and I think we ended up getting Abraham Gutierrez anyway. Yes. From who did we send you guys? There was a minor league catcher, I think, in the deal. I'm trying to remember who exactly came over. I I'm lost, but either way. Yeah. Tyler Anderson, that whole saga kind of went through, and everybody was like, okay, well, you know, maybe the Pirates and the Phils will loop back around. And there have been talks that Brian Reynolds, for the right price, could be on the move. But from what I'm hearing, mostly, is that he's not. Brian Reynolds is the type of guy, though, that once you insert him into your lineup, your team gets astronomically better. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, you're talking if he ends up in New York, if he ends up in Philly, if he ends up in Houston, if he ends up in L.A. I mean, it doesn't matter where he goes. He's a starting outfielder in pretty much any outfield in baseball, I'd say, except maybe Toronto, because they have uh, T. Oscar and Springer and that whole group. Right. But what, I mean, the asking price is going to be high. I mean, I saw a trade or a trade proposal from a site earlier today that said the Pirates would have to ask for Spencer Strider and William Contreras from the Braves. It's I not happening. That. We just saw yeah. Strider yesterday, and man, that's, uh, yeah, I'd be surprised if Atlanta makes that move. And that's the thing is, would the Phillies be willing to meet the asking price for a guy like a Brian Reynolds to make that push towards the postseason? Or do you think the Phillies are going to go more supplement moves, like maybe adding to that strong bullpen even more, maybe adding another starter like a Jose Quintana possibly Mm -hmm. to really supplement this team? So there's two things kind of flying around out there, and it depends on who you trust. Dave Dombrowski said in some media availability yesterday that the team is not looking to make an all-in move. They're not looking to mortgage the future to get a a trade piece this year. And I think that's kind of the prudent thing to do, considering how much better the Dodgers, the Mets, the Astros, the Yankees, teams like that are than the Phillies right now. Like this is a team that could make the playoffs, but is probably not going to compete for a world championship. That's at least where Dave Dombrowski stands. And then I've also heard rumors around the team from some people in the know saying that don't be surprised if there's a bigger move coming than this organization lets on. So I'm not sure if Dave Dombrowski was trying to put out a smoke screen. He's a very savvy. uh, He's a very well-traveled. Now president of baseball operations, been a general manager, other places as well, whatever the title may be. He's been around baseball for a while and he knows how to do this and pull off these trades. So it depends who you trust, but I would lean more towards the, they're probably not going to pony up for a player the caliber of Brian Reynolds. 
He's just a guy that a lot of people have heard the name here in Philadelphia. So worth hearing what you have to say about him, of course, to know what type of player they would be getting if he indeed are willing to make that trade. Well, you're talking about a switch hitter who Mm -hmm. in the month of June, Brian Reynolds in the month of June is undefeated. It doesn't matter what's going on. The guy is ridiculously crazy. Um, you're getting a guy who was a gold glove finalist last year as well. Originally a corner outfielder when the Pirates acquired him in the Andrew McCutcheon trade, shifted him over to center field last year, and it just fit like a glove, no pun intended. Um, but also with Reynolds, it's very interesting that you consider the control that he has too because they signed right. him through these two years of what was supposed to be arbitration, and then he has another arbitration year after that. So you're getting a switch hitting outfielder who was an all-star last year a gold glove finalist last year started the year slow this year but has picked it up since just came off of the il he i mean to me he's the top 10 center fielder in baseball just from what he offers is there a little bit of bias yeah there's a little bit of bias but i also have heard most people especially with these trade packages that i've seen have said like yeah this dude is nuts like he's a very good player and I mean, if you're throwing out a Harper Schwarber Reynolds outfield, if he was to get traded to Philly, I don't think I can name a better outfield in baseball when healthy. Yeah, that would be incredible. And that's all those reasons you lay out are reasons why I kind of lean that it's not going to happen. The closer you get to the deadline, originally we heard the name tossed around and it, it sounds like a guy that, well, the Pirates would be prudent to keep, even if it's not in your contending window right now. When you have young players coming up, still trying to develop, having that continuity certainly helps out. And the fact that he's under team control with a year of arbitration after that is just, uh, yeah, I I don't know that I see. And obviously you're more in the know, but I don't know that I see him moving in general. And if he does, I'd be surprised if it was the Philly. It's just the one name the Pirates have that has been kind of connected or that I've been hearing around the Philly. So something I wanted to get your opinion on. But yeah. Yeah, And I mean, I could say Quintana could be in play for you guys. He'd be a great fifth starter on your team or another bullpen arm that you could look for. Ben Gamble as defensive outfield help would be yeah, another very good guy. Yes, uh, he's good. made a lot of those this year, but he does have a tendency to overdo that. I will say that a lot of people see the good plays, but they don't see when he tries to do it when he has no business trying to do it. Yeah. And it, a single turns into a triple. Um, but I mean, the pirates have a lot of interesting pieces to move around. I just think the two biggest ones, Bednar and Reynolds, you're really going to have to wow Ben Sherrington to get rid of those guys. I mean, like two top 100 prospects for Reynolds is a start. That's where I think you're starting or MLB ready guys, because at this point, I think the pirates are close enough to where next year they can potentially start contending for a wild card spot. And I don't think they want to just throw that away for double a pitching. I think they want to definitely get guys that are going to be up here like ASAP. And you saw that even in the draft, too, with how they drafted all these college pitchers and college hitters. They want guys that are going to start getting here really quick. And I think that's Ben Sherrington's philosophy. And we'll get more into this in just a moment. But also, if you want to bet on this series and bet the Phillies to win three out of four games, make sure you go to Bet Online. Net. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports like UFC and boxing, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information. From live game in-game betting, scores and, uh, scores and podcasts, they have you covered all the way through. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. And BetOnline, of course, is where the game starts. So, Comparing our divisions is where I wanted to go with the rest of the trade deadline talk because that's just the talk of the town with baseball. It's that of time of the year. Obviously, there's two very different things going on in these divisions because Juan Soto is the biggest talk of the town right now. Obviously, still in Washington. Obviously, the biggest trade piece if he gets moved. You hear the St. Louis Cardinals are interested. You hear that the Mets are possibly interested. You hear that the Dodgers and the Yankees are obviously interested. But 
for the Phillies in the pot or for the Phillies in the NL East outside of the Juan Soto stuff. What do you not want to see happen from, say, the Braves and the Mets in terms of making them better in your pursuit to the postseason? Yeah, I mean, the Braves really are the interesting one to me because the Mets, regardless of what they do, I still think they're a significantly more talented roster. The Braves are just one of those teams that knows how to win. They showed it last year. They have a lot of players that fit together. I was down in the clubhouse, and that that clubhouse – because I was getting some sound for a radio station down in uh, Georgia, down in Atlanta, that clubhouse just feels like a winning clubhouse, even when they lose. That's it's not the most talented roster in baseball, but it's a roster that's a defending world champion roster. And they just know what they're doing. The Mets are out of reach. So I'm not worried about who they'll add, but the Braves need kind of what the Phillies need an outfielder. Adam Duvall goes down. So they need to replace him. They need a righty or two in the pen and maybe a back end starter to replace what Ian Anderson has done, which has been not have a good year for them down there. So the thing that worries me more, not so much the Braves getting better because the Phillies to me are totally focused on that third wild card spot, which doesn't require them to track anyone down besides the Cardinals and the San Francisco Giants. But I'd be more worried about, hey, you're in a bidding war between you and Atlanta with a guy that you both need. And because Atlanta is closer to win now mode, they outbid you. So it's that overlap of what the Braves need and Phillies need that really worries me. Like they'll steal a reliever away or something. They'll go get, I, I don't know, Andrew Benintendi when the Phillies had a chance to go get him. Something like that would be worst case. Yeah, and for the Pirates, necessarily the NL Central, it's kind of clear what's going on. The Cardinals and the Brewers are definitely your buyers. The Pirates are sellers, as I say. They're not going to sell off like crazily, I don't think. But you already look at the Cubs. You already look at the um, the Reds. Yeah. And both of those teams have gained track on Pittsburgh, but I also think it's pretty clear that the Cubs and the Reds are definitely going to be selling off a lot more than people think. I mean, Castillo is good as gone in uh, Cincinnati. Brandon Drury, yeah, probably yeah. other names that will pop up in there. The Cubs, of course, have Wilson Contreras, David Robertson, all those bullpen arms that they have. Ian Happ even yeah. has probably gotten some calls, which I think Ian Happ in Philly would be a very interesting scenario. Like that, yeah. yeah, that would be a very interesting guy to add in there too. another switch hitter. I love switch hitters, by the way. I lo- will loathe over it. Everybody loves to get- talk crap about Aaron Hicks in New York, and I'm like, he's a switch hitter. I love him to death. But again – the St. Louis thing, I think a lot of Pirates fans are scared right now because if they go get Juan Soto, that's a scary roster. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're talking is. about Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, and Juan Soto in a lineup every single day of the week. And then imagine if he goes to the Mets, too. I mean, you're talking Pete Alonso, Juan Soto, Brandon Nimmo, Eduardo Escobar, Francisco Lindor, that's a lineup that you don't want to talk about either. And even for the Phillies trying to get into the playoffs, if he ends up going to the Dodgers, then what? (laughs) I mean, Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts, Juan Soto, like, uh, it's a scary time, dude. But if you had to guess where Soto goes, where do you think he would end up? I got to go with just where there's most smoke. It's Arizona. I keep saying Arizona because I just did a big show on football and sports talk radio here. St. Yep. Louis, the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. I've just seen the most smoke there. Uh, they seem like a team that's already top heavy, right? So a, a team like the Mets is very balanced. A team like the Dodgers is very balanced. And they have the the firepower power to go out and get him. But the Cardinals seem – to be building a team where their strategy is we'll get Paul Goldschmidt, we'll get Nolan Arenado, and we'll figure out the rest and just hope that they carry us. So that's this fits into their strategy more to just sell out to get one more guy and hope those three are enough. I hope he ends up in the American League somewhere. So I wouldn't I. mind if he goes to the Yankees. I wouldn't mind if he ends up in Toronto or really anyone in the American League so that we don't have to see him. Uh, however many times a year it's going to be next year because they're cutting down the divisional games, I think like 13 times next year. But, yeah, just get him out of the National League, and I'm totally cool with that. Yeah, same. Um, One place I'd love to see him go, of course, is Toronto. I think that'd be a great place. Really, though, where I want him to end up, and I know it won't happen, but I would love it, is if he ends up in Seattle. I would love to see him play alongside Julio Rodriguez. I just don't think Seattle wants to make that big of a deal where they're at 
I mean, it's very hard with baseball because you always want to make your team better. And when there's a guy like Juan Soto out there, you want to acquire his services. But when it takes ripping apart your entire team almost and your entire farm to do it, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of wild. But also one of the sayings that I have is over here in Pittsburgh, we talk about prospects all the time. It's all I have to talk about because that's what the system is feeding me. But prospects... That, that stuff circles through all the time. You're always talking about prospects, different guys every year. Mm-hmm. Banners are forever, dude, like forever. If Philly went out there and got Soto and it resulted in a World Series, I will bet everybody on the Locked On Phillies fan base and Connor Thomas would have nothing to say about butchering the farm. You bet. When you're, when you're, I mean, again, you look at what the Phillies did the last time they were super competitive and won the World Series. I know Phil, people from Philly who still to this day talk about Roy Holiday. I, I mean, it's it's crazy, dude, and yeah. that's what I'm, and that's where I think a lot of these teams might start thinking like St. Louis. St. Louis, yeah, you might have to get rid of a Nolan Gorman, you might have to get rid of a Mason Wynn, you might have to get rid of some of these younger pitchers that you have and some MLB ready talent. But at the end of the day, if St. Louis and Bush Stadium is raising a 2022 World Series banner, it's not going to matter. And that's where I think Philly, in this scenario. Where you're at right now, you're in a good spot to make the playoffs. If it was, if I was Dombrowski, I'd be doing everything in my power to call the Pirates and try to get Reynolds. I really yeah. would, because everybody else is focusing on Juan Soto, and that's where it scares me a little bit because I want the Pirates to keep Reynolds, but I feel like there's going to be one or two teams that are going to say, screw that, we're going to go talk for Ryan Reynolds, who is A, cheaper, B, will cost less, even though he's still going to cost a lot. And three, is going to offer you about the same production so far this year that you've seen from Soto. So what are your thoughts on that for if the Phillies were to just go for broke and get out of Dodge and just go straight for it? Yeah, uh, I wouldn't love it. I don't think they're in the position to do that this year. And they have four players on the top 100 prospect list. They've got uh, – it's Mick Abel and Andrew Painter, two prep righties that have been drafted in back-to-back years. You have Griff McGarry, who's another young pitcher who just made it most recently, and Logan Ohapi, a catching prospect. And outside of those guys, uh, there's a, a player down in high A ball that's stolen like 30 bases this year who has plus speed. There's a couple guys in double A and triple A that throw hard. But this farm system – was non-existent. It's why the Phillies have spent so much time not contending for the playoffs. And I'm not ready as soon as they get it back to trade it all for a player that, well, nice player. Uh, Brian Reynolds would absolutely help this team. They would be a lock playoff team. I don't know how much closer it gets you to being a World Series team. And that's no fault of his and no fault of the organizations. There's just too many talented teams around baseball this year to make an all-in move unless you're sure it'll put you in that conversation. Understandable. Now, if I was the pot, if I was in your guys' situation and this whole thing was flipped and the Pirates were that record, mm-hmm. I'd go for it. But we're cool going all in. I mean, but that's just because how often do the Pirates get to contend? Yeah. I mean, honestly, but at the end of the day, too, with the farm system we have, I mean, we just have such a deep system right now. I'm cool mm-hmm. with just doing nothing and just letting that continuously come up to the point until you have no choice but to contend because you're going to have like a middle infield of O'Neill Cruz, Leo Piguero, Nick Gonzalez, and Termar Johnson in five years. So that's yeah. going to be interesting. That'll be great. Real quick, actually, I wanted to ask you because I know like we get caught up sometimes covering the sport, covering the teams and like we know these guys, but a lot of Phillies fans probably are not familiar with O'Neill Cruz, Brian Hayes, guys like that. Would you mind talking about some of the top guys that are up right now that we're going to run into? This series that like are just awesome to watch. Uh, O'Neill Cruz is obviously awesome to watch because he's a stat cast like filler. I mean, the guy literally fills the stat sheet every way he can in terms of stat cast. Key Brian Hayes is going to be a Gold Glove nominee this year. I would bank on it. He should probably win the award. He leads all of baseball and defensive runs saved. O'Neill Cruz is also already top five among NL shortstops in defensive runs saved, which one of his big things was how is he going to play defensively? And he's done well. Brian Reynolds obviously will be on the radar of Phillies fans this weekend. David Bednar was our all-star. I'm sure you'll see him in a close game at some point. Um, really, it's just those guys. And then everybody else kind of supplements a little bit. Uh, you'll get to see maybe a little bit of Cal Mitchell 
Uh, Michael Chavis is a really fun guy to watch, former Red Sox first-round pick who came over last year. And by the way, the guy that we uh, traded to you guys last year was uh, Braden Ogle. I looked that up oh, while right. we were talking. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how he's doing right now. but uh, I haven't heard any whispers about him, so yeah. nothing, nothing crazy going on. We'll have to talk to uh, Lindsey Crosby from uh, yeah. the MLB Prospects this year about that one. But um, – I would say, I mean, Michael Chavis is really fun to watch. The guy brings energy. You brought up Ben Gamble earlier, like I did, about his defensive prowess. There's a lot of little spots where the Pirates have good things to watch. I mean, even catcher-wise, Michael Perez even got traded to New York. So it's Tyler Heineman and Jason DeLay back there. We also had former Phillies catcher Andrew Knapp on the team earlier this year, and that did not last That's long. Fun. Love it. Um, <laughs> but – I mean, there's there's some surprising guys to watch. Uh, Brubaker, it's going to be nice to watch him pitch again this week. Uh, Mitch Keller, again, as I mentioned earlier, is a young guy we've been waiting on forever. And I think it's pretty clear, again, we named the Phillies guys, and I think this is going to be a fun series, Connor. So, again, our final prediction, three out of four for Philadelphia, you think? Yeah, that's what I'm saying there. All right. Well, we'll see if these teams end up making a trade at the deadline. It's very possible. There's some... Interesting little stuff the Pirates have that the Phillies might want. You never know, Connor. We might end up doing another crossover <laughs> in yeah, like four might. days. And the best it's, part, you can save some money on a plane ticket because, hey, they're in town. Just catch the bus back. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's all you got to do. It'll be a long bus ride, but, you know. No that's the one. They're going to fly anyway. Just, oh, yeah. I was going to yeah. say, you already know Philly and Pittsburgh are a lot farther apart than people who are not from PA like to think. But, guys – Thank you for tuning in to the Locked On Pirates and Locked On Phillies podcast today on Wednesday, July 27th. Of course, me and Connor will have everything you need to know about the trade deadline for these respective teams over the next couple of days. We're going to be covering this series through the weekend. We'll be back at you tomorrow, Friday, and then Monday. And then, of course, our trade deadline special is next week, as Connor also mentioned earlier. Check out Locked on MLB Prospects with Lindsey Crosby. Check out Locked on MLB with Paul Francis Sullivan. But please call him Sully as he is covering everything you need to know, past, present, and future for all of baseball. With that said, guys, I'm Ethan Smith. That's Connor Thomas. And I will see you guys on the flip side.